Hello guys and welcome back to another video tutorial series on technical interview and today we are gonna discuss on one of the most popular interview question that is mostly asked in many product based company such as Microsoft, Amazon and many top product based company during their technical interview and today's problem is one of the most popular problem for technical interview and that is snake and ladder problem. Since everyone is quite familiar with this snake and ladder problem, so it is quite a popular and interesting problem for any technical interview. So today let's understand and solve the snake and ladder problem. So the problem statement says that given a snake and ladder board, we have to calculate the minimum number of dice throw that is required to win this game. Which means we need to start our game from position number 1 and we can win the game at position number 36 over here. So since this snake and ladder problem is quite popular and easy to play, so I think the problem statement over here is also quite simple and can easily be understood. So let's start solving the problem of snake and ladder game and let's calculate the minimum number of dice throw that is required to win this game. So before jumping into the solution of this problem, we need to understand the problem in depth. So the problem statement says that we need to start our game from the index position 1 and we need to cross all the numbers over here and we can complete the game once we reach to the end of this board that is position 36 and in between this traversal there will be few hurdles that we need to cover and the hurdles are snakes and ladders. So once we come across a ladder which means that it will give an advantage of moving forward that means here for this example if we come across a ladder at position 3 we can move from position 3 to position 16. So obviously this is giving an advantage of moving forward whereas if we come into the mouth of any snake means we have to degrade from position 30 over here to position 4 over here. So it is quite clear that to complete this board in the minimum number of dice roll we have to come across the maximum number of ladder that is present over here because we need to complete this board as quickly as possible. So let's see how we can achieve this problem statement and which data structure shall we use so that we can solve this problem. So let's start solving the problem using our whiteboard session. So over here as soon as you encounter this problem in any technical interview, the first data structure that will come to your mind for solving this problem is our 2D matrix. Because this snake and ladder board give a correct representation of a 2D matrix and it is quite a basic instinct that we will also try to solve this problem using a 2D matrix. But whenever you will be thinking of solving this problem using a 2D matrix then and there you will not only increase the complexity of the program but you will also increase the complexity of writing the code. So whenever you will be using a 2D data structure you will increase the complexity of the problem to order of n square. And also it will be very difficult for you to implement the algorithm because over here you need to iterate over the array in a zigzag manner. So over here you can see that we have to create an algorithm that will pass like a zigzag manner. So manipulating a 2D matrix in a zigzag manner is actually a quite difficult and a complex approach. So choosing a 2D matrix for our data structure is actually a wrong approach of solving this problem. So let's see how we can solve this problem in an efficient manner. So rather than using a 2D matrix, we will be using a 1D matrix that is an array over here to solve this problem. So think of this entire snake and ladder board as a single array of numbers. So how we will represent this snake and ladder board is like instead of taking a 2D matrix, we will create an array of size 36 where each and every index over here represent a particular cell of our board. So the first thing that we understand over here is like we need to represent the entire 2D matrix that is the snake and ladder board into a normal array so that we can write a program with a complexity of order of n. So let's see using an array how we will solve this problem. So the first step of our algorithm is like we need to correctly represent the snake and the ladder in our array defined over here. 
So to represent this entire port into a simple 1D array, what we will do is like each and every position over here, we will define as minus one. So if there is no ladder or snake present over here, we will define as minus one. But since at position three, we are having a ladder over here, so we will represent as 16 means from position 13, we can move to position 16. So here we are marking the position as 16. If we represent it over here is like the first index will be minus one, then two, then 16. And this will keep on going. So the cell wherever there is no snake or ladder, we will be representing it as minus one. And whenever there is a snake in our board, means for example, in the position 30, so here we will be representing it like four. Means from here, we have to traverse back to position four. So at the index position 30, we will be writing four. So in this way, we have to represent the entire 2D array. So let's write down the complete array so that it will be easy for you to visualize the problem. So this is the way we will be structuring our array so that we can represent this entire snake and ladder board in our array. So now since we have understand that how we are planning to solve the problem using a 1D array, now let's understand how we will be approaching to our problem. So the basic thing is like, since we are using our dice to predict the number of moves, so the total number of moves that are possible using our dice is from one to six. Means if we are starting our game from position one, then by rolling our dice, we can move from position number one till position number seven. So the movement of the flare is quite restricted from position one to position six. And taking the advantage of this movement, we will be solving our problem. So what we'll do, we will start our problem from position number one, that is over here. And on each position over here, we will calculate all the number of possible movement that we can encounter by rolling the dice. So for example, we can roll our dice over here at position number one by six probabilities. Means we can get a one, we can get a two. In this way, we can get up to six. So here, if we get a one, means we can move one step at a time, means we will move to the second index over here. Whereas if we roll a dice to two, we will move to position three. So by rolling the dice over here at the first position, this is the correct location where we can traverse. But if you see carefully at the position three, we have a ladder. So by rolling the dice, if we can reach to position three, means we are actually visiting to position 16 over here since we have a ladder that is present over here. So in this way, on each and every index of our array, we have to calculate all the six probabilities of the movement that is possible in this board. And based on the best value that we can encounter, we have to calculate the minimum number of dice roll that we need to do so that we can reach to the end of our board so that we can finish the game and win this game. So this is our basic approach to solve the problem. So I think the way we are representing this entire 2D matrix into a simple array is clear to you. So let's right now try to visualize the way we are trying to solve our problem using our visual display board so that it will be much easy to understand and it will be much clear to you to implement the logic. So let's move to our visual display board to understand the solution. So to solve our snake and ladder problem, it is very important for us to first understand the algorithm by which we are planning to solve the problem. Because without understanding the approach or the way of solving the problem, it will be very difficult to implement the code. So let's first visualize that how we are planning to solve this problem. So the first step of solving the snake and ladder problem is like we have to convert this snake and ladder board into an array of numbers so that it will be easy for us to understand and to solve the problem. So the first step is like, we will convert this entire board into an array of numbers. So over here, you can see that we have plotted all the numbers based on the position of the snake and ladder in the board. So wherever there is no ladder or snake, we have marked that position as minus one, whereas wherever there is a ladder, we have marked with the position where the ladder is heading to. So for example, in the position three, we can see that there is a ladder from three to 16. So we have marked the index with value 16. Similarly for snake, you can see that at position 30, we have a snake over there, which degrades us to position four. That is why at the position 30, we have marked that as four. 
So this is the first step of solving our problem that we have to convert this entire board into an array so that we can easily implement our algorithm and it will be easy for us to compute. Now the second step is like to solve this problem we will be using an auxiliary data structure and that is a queue. So with the help of a queue we are planning to solve this problem. And while solving this problem, we will consider each cell of this board as a tuple which consists of the index and the hop. The index refers to the position of the cell and hops denote the amount of dice roll that is needed to reach that position. So for example, for the first time, we are starting our game from the first index of our board and that is why the position or the index of this tuple is 1 and the number of hops that is needed over here is 0 because we are starting the game from here. So the next step of solving this problem is like we will keep on iterating this entire board until and unless our queue is completely empty. So for the first time we will pop the item from the queue and we will roll our dice to start our game. So there can be 6 possible outcome from our dice that is 1 to 6. So let's consider one value at a time. So let's assume that for the first time the value that came on the dice is 1 and we are at the position 1 and 0 and once we are visiting a position we have to mark that cell as visited like I have marked it in yellow color so that we do not compute the same cell again and again and increase the complexity of our program. So what we are doing over here is like Right now we are at position 1 and the number of hops required to reach position 1 is 0. And so we are rolling our dice and the output that came on the dice is 1. So it's quite clear that we will move to the next position that is 2. So right now we are at new index that is 2 and the number of hops that are needed to reach this position is 1. Since the number of time we have rolled the dice is 1. And over here you can see that the value on that cell is minus 1 means there is no snake or ladder that is placed over here. So this position doesn't give any additional advantage to us. So we are just marking that position as 2 and 1. The 2 denotes the position of our move and 1 denotes the number of hop. Now let's roll the dice again to see another possible solution. So in this time let's assume that the value that came on the dice is 2 and we are still in position 1. So if we are in position 1 and the value of the dice is 2 means we can move third place of our cell. So our new index is 3 and where there is a ladder that is present. Thus we are creating a tuple with 16 and 1. Means by anyhow if we make the dice roll to 2 means we can move to the position 16 from here. So we are pushing this tuple into our queue. And we will keep on doing the same operation for all the possible combination of the dice roll that is from 1 to 6. So here you can see that if the value of the dice is 3 and we are at the first location of our board with the dice value as 3 we can move to the fourth index. So in this way we will keep on doing the same approach until and unless we complete all the combination of the dice. So over here you can see that we have covered all the possible outcome that can be possible from our starting index. And we have marked all the cell as visited because we do not want any additional computation on each and every step. Now since we are done with the first position of our board, now we will move to the second position over here. And that's why we will be popping the first item from our queue that is 2 and 1. And we will keep on rolling the dice and see all the 6 possible outcome by which we can travel to the entire board. So again we will roll our dice and over here we have the value 1. And thus from position 2 and 1 with the value of dice as 1 we can move to the next position that is 3 and 1. But since this position is already visited so we will skip this and we will keep on rolling the dice until and unless we found the next unvisited index. So over here you can see that with the value of 6 in the dice we got a new index that is position 8 and we will push that value in the queue. And in this way we have to keep on computing each and every cell of our snake and ladder board till we reach to the end of our board that is at position 36. So at the last you can see that we have covered all the position over here and while reaching position 36 the value of the hop is 3 means with the help of 3 hop we can complete the entire board over here. So the total number of dice roll that is needed to complete this board is 3.
So I hope you have understand the way we are planning to solve this problem. So let's start with the implementation of the snake and ladder problem. I hope you guys have visually got an idea that what is the procedure by which we are planning to solve this problem. Now let's convert that visualization into our code. So let's start with implementing the snake and ladder problem using our Java code. So before implementing the code and to solve our problem, don't forget to like and share this video. And if you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update from my site and you are always ready for your next interview. So let's start with the implementation of snake and ladder problem. So let's name the function as finding minimum hops. And here we will be passing the entire array that we have created out of this snake and ladder board. So the first thing that we need to create is like we need to create an array called as visited which will note down all the status of the cell that are present over here. So each and every time we are visiting one of the cell, we will mark that corresponding index as visited. So here we will first create an array called as visited. And we will initialize the entire array with false means we have not started visiting any of the cell till now. So once we are done with creating the array that will keep the status of our cell, the next step is like we need to create the definition of each and every cell over here. So as we have already discussed that each cell we will be defining with two attributes. One as the position and number two as the number of hop that is needed to visit that cell. So we will create a class called as cell. So as we are discussing that to solve this problem, we will be using an additional data structure that is Q so that we can iterate over each and every element over there and push the element in the queue. So here we will first define a queue and we will insert the first index of the board into our queue. So here you can see that we have created the first cell of our board and we have defined the position of the cell as 0 and the number of hops that needed to move to this position is 0 since this is our starting index. And then we will be pushing this corresponding cell into our queue. So here we are done with the initial setup of starting our program. Now we have to start with our main logic of solving the problem. So as we have discussed that we have to keep on iterating this entire board or we can say the entire array until and unless we have an empty queue. So here we will keep on iterating over the queue until and unless it is empty. So what we'll do over here is like we will first pop the first element from the queue. And once the first cell that is the first element is popped out, we will check the index position of this cell. So if the index position of the cell is equal to 36, means we are done with the entire iteration. So we have to break the loop. So over here, we got the first item. Now we will start with the iteration of rolling the dice. And on each cell over here, we have to keep on checking all the six possible combinations that are possible from here. So we will start a for loop to check the value of the dice. So what we are doing over here is like we are rolling our dice six times from our current index position. And we will also keep on checking that it should not cross the outer limit of our array. Means we should not cross the position 36 from here. So, so we are keeping a boundary check over here. Now what we have to do is like we will check that the way that the index that is coming after rolling the dice is visited or not. So if the node is visited then we will update the position of this cell with the new position that we can go from here. Means that from position 3 we can go to position 16. So we will update the position of this cell to 16. So here first we will check that whether the cell is visited or not. So if the cell is not visited then we will create an empty cell over there. And we will update the value of the position and the hop in this new cell. 
and we will mark this new cell as visited. So here we have done three activities till now. We have created an empty cell, we have updated the hop count of the cell and we have marked that cell as visited. So let's take an example that we are right now over this cell. We have created an empty cell and we have initialized the hop count of this cell and we have marked this cell as visited. So now the next step is like we need to update the value of the position over here. So what we'll do is like so if the value of the cell is not equal to minus 1 means there is a snake or a ladder that is present over here. So we will update the position of the new cell with the value that is present on the array. Otherwise we will just update the position with the corresponding index. And then we will push this newly created tuple into our queue. And hence we will close our for loop. And at the end, we will return the hop count of the last cell that we have created. So, this is pretty much the basic solution of this problem. So, I will give the entire code in the description below. Feel free to download and reuse the code and try to understand each and every step at a time. And if you still face any problem regarding solving this problem, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. I will be happy to help you over there. So I hope you guys are clear with the entire procedure of how we are planning to solve our snake and ladder problem. So with this entire implementation process, we can find out the minimum number of hop that is required to complete this snake and ladder game. So if you still have any doubt, feel free to watch the video again from the start so that it will be very easy for you to solve the problem during your interview. So let's move to our next interview question. See you on our next video. Thank you.